Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om The sages said, O Lord, tell us the greatness of the syllable Om and that of the six lingas, O great sage. Also, please tell us about the worship of the devotees of Shiva in order of realization. Sutta said, All of you, sages, have now requested a very good thing. Only Shiva can explain this properly, no one else. Still, I shall explain the same with Shiva's grace. May Shiva increasingly guard us, you, and everyone else. The syllable Aum, Pranava, means an excellent boat to cross the ocean of worldly existence. Pra, of the Prakriti, the world evolved out of it. Navam, Navang Varam, an excellent boat. Or Pranava may mean there is no world for you. Or it may mean that which leads to salvation. Or it may mean that which leads to new knowledge. After annihilating all actions, it gives the persons who repeats the mantra or worship a fresh knowledge of the pure soul. This pranava is twofold, the subtle and the gross. The subtle one is of a single syllable where the constituent five syllables are not differentiated clearly. The gross one is of five syllables where all the constituent syllables are manifest. The subtle one is for the jivan mukta, liberated living soul. The need for the contemplation of the meaning through the mantra is only up to the destruction of the physical body. When the body is destroyed, undoubtedly he completely merges in Shiva. The mere repeater of the mantra certainly attains yogic communion with Shiva. A person who repeats the mantra 36 crores of times certainly attains the yogic communion. The subtle pranava is again twofold, short and long. The long one is present in the heart of the yogis alone separately in the form of the A letter, U letter, N letter, Bindu, and Nada. It is endowed with all the digits of the time sound. Shiva, Shakti, and their union are indicated by the letter N, ramified into three, and this is called the short, subtle pranava. The short pranava shall be recited and repeated by those who desire all their sins to be annihilated. The five elements, space, air, fire, water, and earth, and their five subtle causes, sound, touch, form, taste, and smell, together activized in relation to achievement of desires, are called pravritas. The short, subtle pranava is for the pravritis, those who desire continuation of material existence. And the long one is for the nivritis, those who are averse to the same. The pranava is to be used in the beginning of the vyahritis, mantras, in the beginning of the Vedas, and during the prayer at dawn and at dusk, along with bindu and nada. If the devotee repeats it nine crores of times, life becomes pure. A further repetition for nine crores of times enables him to win over the earth element. A further repetition for nine crores of times enables him to win over the water element. Similarly, for each repetition of nine crores of times, he is able to win over the elements of fire, wind, and space. The attributes of smell, taste, etc. are similarly to be won over by successive repetitions of nine crores of times. False egotism is to be won over by another repetition of nine crores of times. By repeating it daily for a thousand times, the devotee becomes perpetually pure. 
O Brahmanas, thereafter the repetition of the mantra is conducive to the achievement of desires. A devotee who thus completes 108 crores of japa of pranava, aum, and is thus fully enlightened, shall master shuddha yoga. A person who has thus mastered shuddha yoga certainly becomes a liberated living soul. A maha-yogi who performs japas and meditations of Shiva perpetually in the form of pranava and maintains samadhi, mystic trance, certainly becomes Shiva himself. He must perform japa after duly performing the anganyasa, ritualistic placing of the finger over different parts of the body as prescribed, and invoke the sages concerned, the deities presiding over, and the name of the chandas, meter, in which the verse is composed. The devotee who practices the japa of pranava, aum, with nyasa, becomes a sage. He shall attain all the benefits of the ritualistic nyasa, such as the blessings of ten mothers and the attainment of six pathways. As for those who are devoted to activities, and those who both refrain from and indulge in activities, the gross pranava is recommended. Shiva yogis are of three types, devoted to rites, austerities, and japa. The kriya yogi engages himself in sacred rites and worship, spending money, using limbs of the body, and uttering words like namaha, obeisance, etc., the tapo yogi desists from injuring others, restrains all external sense organs, takes limited quantities of food, and performs worship. The japa yogi is quiet, performs japa always, is free from all sorts of desires, and maintains all the observances mentioned before. A pure man shall obtain liberation step by step, beginning with Salokya Mukti, as a result of being purified by the worship of Shiva yogis with sixteen services and homage, as described before. O Brahmanas, I shall now explain Japa Yoga. Please listen. Even the person practicing austerities shall perform Japa to purify himself. O Brahmanas, the five-syllable Shiva mantra is the gross pranava. The name Shiva is used in the dative case, prefixed with namaha, nama shivaya, homage to Shiva. It implies the five principles. The japa of the five-syllable mantra shall always be performed along with pranava. A man can achieve everything by means of japa of the five-syllabled mantra. O Brahmanas, the devotee shall take instruction from his preceptor, sit comfortably on well-cleaned ground, and start japa. The practice shall start on the Chaturdashi day of the bright fortnight and conclude on the Chaturdashi day of the dark fortnight. The months of Magh and Bhadrapad are the most auspicious of all occasions. During the days of Japa, he shall take only a single meal during the day in limited quantities. He shall abstain from useless talk and curb all his sense organs. He shall uninterruptedly render service to his parents and the king or any master whom he serves. By performing the Japa a thousand times, he shall be free from indebtedness, otherwise not. The five-syllabled mantra shall be repeated 500,000 times, all the time remembering the various aspects of Lord Shiva, who is seated in the lotus pose. He is the bestower of all auspiciousness. He has the crescent moon for his coronet. He has given shelter to Ganga in his matted hair. With Shakti seated on his left thigh, he shines with great concourse of attendants around him. He bears the moon on his forehead. He shows the gestures of bestowing boons and offering freedom from fear. He is the cause of perpetual blessing. He is Sadashiva. He shall be mentally worshipped at first as stationed in the heart, 
or in the solar zone. While performing the japa of the five-syllabled mantra, he shall sit facing the east. All his actions shall be pure. In the morning of the Chaturdashi day of the dark fortnight, after finishing the daily rites, he shall sit in a clean, beautiful place. He shall control his mind and senses. He shall repeat the five-syllabled mantra 12,000 times in this way. <laughs> 